So when we sign up to serve, we don't need to be saying, look, it's at my convenience. We need to say, hey, I'm doing this for everything that Jesus did for me. He gave his life for me. I'll gladly give my life for him. Come on, somebody. Amen. That's good preaching. I like that. It blessed me if it didn't bless you. Amen. Amen. So I want to give you today seven attitudes of a servant. We're going to touch on these pretty quickly today. So as the old preacher said, hold on to your hat. All right. All right. Several, seven attitudes of a servant. Number one, volunteering is something you do. Serving is something, and I want to just use this phrase, you heart. It's something you do with your heart, right? Deuteronomy 11 and 13 says we're to love the Lord our God and serve Him with all of our heart and all of our soul. You see where a volunteer says, you know, look what I did and look how I did it. A servant, they're just simply focusing on what they can sacrifice for others because that's what's in their heart. A volunteer says, I desire to be observed, but let me tell you, a servant has this invisible attitude of the heart that says, you know, it really doesn't matter if anybody notices me. It doesn't matter if anybody ever gives me any attaboys or says, good job. None of that matters because I know that there is one. Come on, the one who searches the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And I know he's watching me. And besides, I'm not really doing this for everybody else. I'm doing this for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Come on, somebody. We ought to have that kind of a heart to serve. And then secondly, volunteers focus on what they give. And service, servants focus on what Jesus gave. When you're a volunteer, you say, you know, I've given so much of my time, my energy, so much effort, so much of myself. And, and a lot of times people give because they want kind of attention maybe. Or, or they, and they want to focus on what they've given. And really, when they're doing that, they're saying that my service is really all about myself. But actually, our service as believers has to do with how much Jesus has given when we think about how much he's given, anything we give in comparison just pales in comparison to the great sacrifice that he's made. There's a story, the true story of two Moravian young men. Maybe you've heard of the Moravian revival that took place in the 14th century. One of the greatest missionary type revivals that ever took place. They sent missionaries all over the world in, in their day. But there were two young Moravian men who were born up and raised up out of that revival that they desired to go to this island in the West Indies, okay? And they, they, were, they wanted to go there because there were 3,000 slaves who were on this island that had never heard the gospel, okay? Okay? And, and, and these young men wanted to go there and, and be missionaries and take the gospel to them. So they set out a way to try to find out how, how they could get there. But the only issue was that the man who owned the island was from Britain, and he was an absolute atheist. And he had vowed there's no way any missionary, any gospel preacher, any pastor, no one like that is ever coming to this island. I don't believe in the gospel, and no one's ever going to be here like that. And so these two young men thought, maybe there's no way we can ever actually do this. And, and uh, what someone finally told them, they said, you can actually sell yourself into slavery. Imagine that. And so these two young men decided to do that. And you can imagine... Uh, you know, their, their heart that they had, because this wasn't just a six-month or a three-month or, a, you know, a two- or three-year commitment. This was a lifelong commitment. These were young men who were saying, I'm going to become a slave. I'm going to go to that island. I'm going to serve the rest of my life as a slave on this island for this, this, this atheist guy. And they were willing to do that. And you can imagine the tears that were probably shed as they got on the boat, right? And, the, you know, their families are there. Their friends are there. And, and they're, they're, they're crying, you know. They're thinking, man, I'm never going to see these two again. You know, they didn't have Skype back in that day. Hello, come on, somebody. There was no social media. There was no Facebook, okay? And so, I mean, you know, they're like, these, we're saying goodbye to them forever and ever. 
And so, and so as the people were weeping and crying, they got on this boat. And as the boat went away, uh, this is a true story. They shouted to those who were back on the pier. These two young men shouted this phrase. They said, may the lamb that was slain receive the reward of his suffering. May the lamb that was slain receive the reward of his suffering. In other words, they were saying, look, don't weep for me. Don't cry over me. Listen, the lamb's already done more for me than I can ever do for him. Come on. And he said, let, let this not be about me. Let this be about Jesus. Let, let, and, and may he receive the reward of what he actually did. Don't look at the sacrifice that we're making. I want you to look at the suffering that Jesus had. How many of you believe that's an awesome thing for those young men to do? You see, they weren't focusing on themselves. They were focusing on Jesus. And then number three, how many of you are still with me today? Volunteers keep score and servants make sacrifices. A volunteer keeps track, and, and, and so after time and over time, actually the truth is in ministry, if you've never been in ministry, it's real easy to get frustrated or disappointed or discouraged, especially if numbers are, are, are sometimes what you're looking for, or, or the attention is what you're looking for, or, or maybe it was more work than you ever thought that it was going to be. But a servant says this, a servant says, you know, that's what I'm here for, I'm here to sacrifice. I'm here to take up my cross. It's supposed to inconvenience me. And, and maybe I'm not always supposed to enjoy it. But let me tell you, I always enjoy serving the Lord. I mean, you know, sometimes it can be difficult to serve the Lord. Sometimes it can. Someone would say, well, I may never be appreciated like I should be. But I'm still just grateful for the opportunity to serve. Come on. How, and, 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 you know, we need to, add, we need to have this feeling of, you know, I don't need some glorious task. Oh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need to be seen. I, I can do the unrecognized and the underappreciated. And, and, and actually, that's what Paul talks about when he went to talk about the body of Christ, right? He said to the, in, 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 in the, in, in the Corinthians, he said, the hand can never say to the foot, I don't have any need of you. And Paul went on to say that it's the unseen parts of the body that are actually the most important parts. I mean, the truth is, you know, that, that you can live without a foot or without a leg even. A lot of people do. But the unseen parts, you know, the parts that, 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 that are vital to keeping the body alive, they're unseen and oftentimes unappreciated, right? You know what I'm saying? Oftentimes we look at people on the outside and we see the parts that's seen and we say, my, don't you look lovely today? Aren't you wonderfully looking today? And we look at how their hair is come and all of that. But we never say, wow, your liver is looking amazing today. But how many of you know that liver's doing a great job? Come on, somebody. Your heart's doing a great job. So your unseen, the unseen parts of the body may not have as much prominence. But let me tell you something. In God's eyes, they're just as important. Come on. Amen. Amen. And a servant sometimes says, I'll do the inconvenient things at inconvenient times. And I'm not going to show up with this idea that I'm only going to do what I want to do. A servant shows up with the idea, you know, I'm here. I'm doing it for God. My focus is not on myself. It's on Him. My focus on, on serving God. And even though sometimes it inconveniences me, I'm going to do it anyhow. Amen. That's good today. I want to be a servant. And then volunteers are time sensitive and servants are need sensitive right someone who's a volunteer says i can only do this much the volunteer says i just don't have the time to do that i'll give you uh, one hour and that's okay to uh, budget your time I, i'm not beating anybody up but a servant often says something like this what's the need what's the need i'll arrange my schedule to meet that need and did you know that your Jesus talked extensively about that? Yeah. 
How many of you have a Jesus? He's your Jesus. Come on. He's my Jesus. He's your Jesus. Your Jesus talked extensively about that because he told a story one time about a man that had been beaten and, and, and robbed and, and stripped and left along the side of the highway. And there were these religious guys that came walking along the road and, and they were all busy. They had their agenda. They had to get their stuff done. And they were just too busy to be bothered with this guy. And so they said, oh man, some Somebody needs to take care of him, but I've got to, I've got to go to the temple. I've got religious duties I've got to do, and, and besides that, it's going to cost me out of my own money, out of my own energy. I mean, I might stain my robes carrying this bloody guy. I, 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 what am I going to do? And so they passed him on by, and then Jesus talked about a man that they called the Good Samaritan, right? Have you heard the Good Samaritan? And this guy, he saw this man, and he immediately stopped. He got off of, you know, whatever he was riding, and he, he went down, and he picked him up. He, 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 he poured oil and, and wine into his sores and took care of him and bandaged him, took him to an inn, told the innkeeper, look, you take care of him, and whatever expenses that he incurs, don't worry about it. I got it covered when he's back. How many of you think that's a powerful story? Come on. This guy was not time sensitive. He was need sensitive. And I'm going to tell you in your life... Uh, being in ministry, being a servant, serving the Lord is going to cost you some time, all right? It's gonna, there's going to be needs that come along where you, that it's going to just absolutely be at the worst possible moment. It's going to be at the moment when you're the brokest. It's going to be the most difficult time. But let me tell you something. God will present that need before you. How many of you think we ought to say, you know something, Lord? If you want me to meet the need, I'm going to do it. Come on. I'm willing to be a servant. And you know what's interesting about this story is that Jesus didn't just tell this story and leave it like that. You want to know what he said at the end? After he told the story in your Bible, is this in your Bible? How many of you got a Bible? Is this in your Bible? Is it just in my Bible? It's in your Bible too, am I right? This is what Jesus said. He said, then Jesus said to him, go thou and do likewise. In other words, that's what Jesus was saying to us. He's saying, don't be time sensitive. Be need sensitive. Come on. Amen. And then number five, volunteers want for themselves to look good. A servant wants to make God look good. Right? Serving is not about how I look. Serving is about how can God be seen through what I do. It can't be about me being noticed. It's got to be about God being noticed through what I do. Hello. Matthew chapter 5 tells us this. You are the light of the world. A city set that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they hide a lamp and hide it under a basket but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. And then there is this powerful verse. I just read it earlier. I want to read it again. It says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. There's something about the way that we serve the Lord. Amen. Something about the way that we do things. Come on. That when people look at us, it makes them want to thank God. It makes them want to praise God. It want to make them grateful for who we are and what we're doing. Come on. It's is there anybody that says, I want to be the light of the world? I want Jesus to shine through me. I want to make such a difference that when people see me, they say, wow, that guy, he reminds me of Jesus. And I just want to praise God for who they are, for what they do. Come on. That's what this is all about today. Not that we look good, but that he looks good. 